person is a gift from God with gifts to share. We all have unique abilities, strengths, and skills that allow us to have an impact in the places we live, learn, work, and play. Gifts for the greater good. That's what it's all about. So let's take this journey together and discover how we've all been gifted for more. It's interesting when we look at life. A lot of times, life, we create our own views. Have you ever had a caricature done of yourself or ever watched someone make a caricature, right? They always pick out some of the things that are obvious, that stick out. Maybe it's the way your forehead is or your goatee, or maybe it's your belly. Had one of those once. I wish the guy didn't do my belly. Awkward. He didn't get a tip. Um, But caricatures are based on the things that stick out from us, but they don't necessarily capture all of us. And this morning, we're going to look at God. We're going to look at the character of God and how we can have confidence in him. And with that, I want us to realize that as we do this Gifted Morpher series, that everyone is a gift. I don't know where you've been in life, but sometimes it's hard for me some days to view myself as a gift to others. Matter of fact, there's sometimes that I don't think I'm good enough for anybody, and I feel better hiding than dealing with the world around me. But then there's other days that when I grab a hold of how God made me and what I'm good at with God, all of a sudden I hear people say thank you, or thank you for following Jesus, or thank you for being a gift. And I share that with you because I think a lot of times we forget that we are a gift from God. So today, we're going to talk about confidence in God's character. And the importance of this is to understand that we want to be able to have a clear understanding of who God is. And see, when we understand that we have a confidence in God's character, it changes our relationship with God. We're going to go through a couple items here this morning. We're going to look at the the character of God and then what we do with that. So to start off with this, changing our relationship with God, let me read for you Ephesians 2, 4 to 9. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Catch that part. I'm going to read it again. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point us to all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. All right? I just want to hit that and just, just, just look at this verse again after we just got done reading it. God is so rich in mercy that he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. We have the ability to live forever. Amen? I mean, that song, Holy Forever, spark something in me. Singing those words and having this realization that my life is eternal. Some days I can't comprehend that. I don't understand how the maker of the universe gave such a gift. And see, when we have this confidence and this reality, when we look at this, that God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, his incredible wealth of his grace grace and kindness towards us. See, we see Jesus here, and we get to have the same thing. That's our relationship with God. We get that gift. So when you think about the confidence that you get to have in God, we saw it with Christ Jesus, and we see it with so many others around us as his grace and mercy continues. 
If you were here last Sunday, you caught some stories of grace and mercy. I had the privilege last week of baptizing a woman, and it was phenomenal hearing her story as we talked. She wasn't even planning on being here last Sunday, and she felt drawn to it. And there were certain things that I spoke that hit her, and she felt it was time to be baptized. It's amazing, God's gift with us. Confidence in God's character changes our response to others. Okay, so let's look at this. Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. You see, when we are leaning on God, when we have that confidence in him, how we engage with humanity is going to change because of our relationship with God. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. But our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. So see, when we talk about engaging others, if we act like we didn't have God, then we are not having confidence in him. And it says right here, let's look at this. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins... Once you were dead, it amazes me how many believers I meet that have come into the presence of the Lord in their life and they deny the gift later on. And I don't mean that they don't believe that God exists. I had, I had a friend of mine, I remember him telling me, he's like, oh, I don't think I'm good enough for God's gifts. I don't think I'm good enough for the grace and mercy that he gives us. But scripture tells us that's not true. It tells us that when we bring the gift into our lives, when we receive the Holy Spirit, when we turn in that direction, things change. Just like the rest of the world obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. Church, there is a reality that you're either with God or you're against him. There's no in-between. And see, when we chase after God, our responses to others are going to be different because we're not going to look like the world. And it says right there at the end, but our very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else. We were. See, when you follow Jesus, when you have that confidence in the Lord, you're not in that past, you're in that past tense. You're in a whole different mindset with God. You're attached to the body and the Holy Spirit and how you engage other people changes you. We don't look like the rest of the world. The things that the world gets excited about, we won't be. Unless you're an Eagles fan, then that'll probably cross both sides. But think about it, right? So often we think we should be thinking like those that aren't following Jesus, but the fact is, is that when you're in the kingdom of God, you're going to think differently, and the way you respond to others is going to be different. Confidence in God's character changes our relationship with ourselves. Mm. I know many of us, and myself included, it is a lot easier some days to love others than love myself. I know how I think. I know where my heart is some days, just like you know better than anybody else how you are. You know when you get a little judgy on somebody, just like I know when I do. We know our records of wrongs that God has released from us. And let's read this passage. It's very short, but man, it is so powerful when it comes to viewing ourselves. Ephesians 2, verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He's created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. Are you okay with that, that you're a masterpiece? I mean, are you, are you really okay with it? Like, do you feel like you can strike this pose? Right? Like, sometimes in life, it's hard to think of ourselves as a masterpiece. 
But the fact is, is that you were beautifully and wonderfully made. And as it says right here in Scripture, he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. That means you were made in a beautiful, wonderful way that great things can happen because you exist. I was blessed, and I want to share this with you because I was blessed on Thursday night. Um, a story could, I could take the whole time telling you stories of, of, of this friendship with this guy, Chris. Um, but Chris and I became friends over bicycles. And Chris engaged with other believers up at the bike shop. And we started to create this family up there. And he went away. He came back from a year trip. And he's going back on another trip again. And he brought families and friends to hang out on Thursday night and give a little goodbye to him. And it was amazing how many people said, oh, you're Scott. Now, I'm sharing this with you not to, to boast about what happened with me. No, it's because I don't really do anything interesting. I, I just am being me. But what happened there, and the reason why I'm pointing this out is that I created a whole new friend group Thursday night with people that I never met before. But because of allowing God to let me be a masterpiece, and to walk into the plans that he's had for me long ago. By accepting that gift, I got to watch really cool things happen around me. Think about Sunday. If you were here, Biker Sunday. I'm going to pick on Lowell because I don't think he's here so I can talk about him. Lowell accepted his gift 20 years plus years ago. that He was made to ride motorcycles. And it intrigued me as I walked around and talked to people and how they got here. And it fascinated me because it wasn't even because of Lowell anymore. But it, then as I walked down the tree, I started to find out that there might be five people, five generations back from Lowell that they got here. And see, that's Lowell stepping into his gift. And I put that out there to you because I think time and time again, we don't realize that we are a masterpiece that you were made beautifully as you. You don't need to be like me or anybody else. Just be the best you. Does that make sense saying it that way? And it's fascinating, church, because this is what happens. These are going to be our responses because God's character says right here, he says that this is how he is. He says flat out in these scriptures how we are with him. And how we can love ourselves. So three responses to God's character. We recognize ourselves as gifts from God. All right? That's your response right there. Number one, boom. You are a gift from God. Okay? When you do that, when you recognize that, okay, that opens up a whole new world for us. So let's look at Ephesians 2.10 again. All right? So we're God's masterpiece. He's created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us. That's our response. Go do the good things that he planned for us long ago. All right? Look at this next verse. It says, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. See, you're built like God. Jesus was a man that walked this earth, fully God, fully human. And you are fully human. And when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, now you get to walk as a new masterpiece. The gifting of God is so fascinating when it comes to ourselves. Now, listen to these statistics. Church leaders overwhelmingly believe people's giftings reflect the God who created them. 98%. But two in five pastors agree that helping people discovering their gifts is an important priority in their church. That's screwed up. I don't like that stat. So over the next five weeks and beyond, one of the things that I'm staking in the ground as a pastor is helping you be the best masterpiece that God's created you to be. Amen? All right, we're going to try that again. Amen? Amen? See, what I'm saying to you, church, is, is as your pastor, I want you to be amazing. I want to hear the stories of what you're doing with God because he made you a masterpiece. 
And see, I hope that this statistic changes because we know that when you are working in the spaces that God's made you for, beautiful things happen. Listen to this quote. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important things about us. A.W. Tozer. So my hope is over the next five weeks as we dig into this, you're going to be changing some of these thoughts that you have about God. The next response is we realize others are gifts from God. Ooh, that one's hard. I've met some people that I feel like they're more of a curse than a gift. You don't have to raise your hand if you agree with that one. But you know what I'm talking about, right? There's our response to others and how we deal with others will directly coordinate correlate with our confidence in God. So if we know that God is there for us, he loves us, he made us beautifully and wonderfully made, and he made all of us that way, then how we deal with others is how we're going to view them. Let's look at this scripture here. It says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin, catch this part, this is Ephesians 2, 1 to 3, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Okay, see, again, we have this, we used to be this way, now we're this way. So when it comes to dealing with others, we shouldn't be like the rest of the world, casting judgment pushing people aside, creating ins and outs and cliques and different groups. No. We should be welcoming those around us and loving on them in ways that we never thought we could before and working with them to see the beauty of the Lord in their lives. See, what's interesting is, is that when you start to love others and have this response to others like God has this response to you, all of a sudden you spend less time being judgmental and more time trying to build someone up to be more into the masterpiece of how God made them. What's interesting too is that when you engage with people as God loves you and when you look at them as a gift, all of a sudden how you engage them changes. And you might be praying more for them. You might be wanting to see God move in their life. I wonder sometimes what happens when people wrong us, how it is that we are able to, how should I say, um, pray for them on a regular basis, right? And what does that look like? And, and if we can remember that we were once living in disobedience, following our own ways, um, but God continued to pursue you. I don't know everybody's faith walk and where you all came from. It's, it's hard to remember everybody's story. If I, but, but what I want to share with you is this. This is all I know. Is that whenever I follow after Jesus, stuff happens really cool. And whenever I do it my way or not the way of God, bad stuff happens. And I wonder what happens if we spend more time loving on other people and praying for them and engaging them and treating them like a gift what might happen with that? Finally, our third response. We respond to God's goodness and share our gifts. I was awful at Christmas time when I was a kid. I didn't want to share my gifts. You were allowed to look at it, but you were not allowed to play with it. And when I would go to an activity with my new Christmas gift, or my friend would come over and we'd share our Christmas gifts and show each other. Sharing was not playing with, it was showing you. See, some of you know what I'm talking about. But let's ask this question. We've already established just through a couple of verses, a quick look at the Bible, that you were beautifully and wonderfully made, that you are a masterpiece by God. And he's made you with plans. So I wonder, church, how often do you wake up in the morning and say, God, here I am. Let's have at it today. 
God, what's your plans for me today? I'm awake. Here I am, Lord. I don't most days. Those are, that's a struggle of a prayer. There's some days I wake up and I look at it and the sun's coming up I'm like, no, Lord, I want to sleep longer. Or I look at my schedule for the day. I'm like, how am I going to get through this one? See, church, I'm sharing this with you, and I believe that this sermon series is important because I think a lot of us don't spend time figuring out who we are with God. I think we roll along through life, and we just try to sail along and make the best of it every day. And I want to ask the question, what if we started living more intentionally as a masterpiece? So let me leave you with this image. That if you're a beautiful masterpiece then that means that you should be hung in the museum of the world. And see, when we looked at the Hall of Faith, and we looked at these different Bible characters throughout the summer, we saw these great people. But they were only great because they turned towards God. I could sit here and go over and look at many of you that I know and talk about the greatness that I see in you through God. See, I wonder what happens if you can start viewing yourself as beautifully and wonderfully made by God, not because of your past, but how he made you and what you can do in the future. So with that, let's look at these verses here. Ephesians 2, 7 to 10. So God can point to us all future in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us. As shown in all he has done, for us who are united with Christ Jesus, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you've done, so none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. Church, Grab that. Hold that. You weren't just randomly put on this earth. You're alive. Still. And and that's my hope for you. Is that when you look at this, these verses here, that you own them. That you can can realize that like... (laughs) You're here because it's a gift. So over the next five weeks, I would like you to explore this gift with me, this gift of your life. Here's a website, everygift.org, and yes, it's an evaluation test. But I guarantee you, you'll have fun with it. And I want you to share it with me. Email me. I want to walk with you through this. I don't want you just to take it and be like, oh, that's cool. It was fascinating to me because it has a self-exploratory part and has a part that it says, oh, this is what we think. There's 12 areas of, of skills and things. And what I started to find as I took the test and as I read my stuff, I felt pretty good about myself. Here's why I felt good. The things that it said I was good at, I already knew I was good at. And that made me feel good. But the part that I didn't like is there were things I was supposed to work on. I didn't like that part. But I also liked that part because it's helping me to be a better masterpiece. Church, I want you to explore this with me. I want you to go through this process, and I want you to see what can happen. And maybe this week you're a little scared too. Maybe next week you will. But over the next five weeks, I look forward to seeing where it is that you're going. So just go to the website. You fill out the form. You go on, and there it is. Because church, we're gifted for more. I want to close on this. I learned a long time ago the hard way that when I applied the gifts that God has given me and the skills that I have to my own doing, I get some fruit monetarily. I get some fame and recognition, and that's great, but it lacks joy. And when I started pointing the gifts that God gave me, I looked up to the sky and said, Lord, I'm yours. All of a sudden, stuff started happening. And I started to watch God use my life and others around me because every person I talk to, when I see them doing great things with God, I say, hey, what'd you do? Oh, I had to give my life to Christ. So I don't know where you're at, but do some soul searching this week. You're going to see some email, an email from me probably tomorrow about some other ways for you to dig in. But church, 
as we move out of our equipping phase and into our deployment phase of our three years of becoming a discipling church, this is the part that we've been waiting for. This is that part that we get built up so God can continue to use us for the good plans he has, so we can become aware and not ignorant of how God moves with us. So let me pray over you, because I'm excited as we delve into loving ourselves and loving God and having our responses to others. So God, I thank you so much for this morning. Lord, on this rainy, dreary day, we're here. Lord, I know there are some folks that couldn't be here. They're going to be watching us online or catch it later this week. God, I just acknowledge that you are present in our lives, that you made us, and that you brought us together for great things. So Lord, I ask that you continue to bless our relationships, those within the kingdom of God and those that we are ambassadors to. Lord, help us to walk this week as a loving, gentle, amazing person that is a masterpiece created by you. Lord, help others to see you in us in spite of us. So God, help us to clean the mud off of our masterpiece when we receive your grace this morning. And we give this to you in your awesome, holy, wonderful name. Amen. Thank you.